one of the things that we were trying to do when we came to Roswell and in this area was kind of track Billy the Kid down a little bit. And one of the people that played a part in Billy the Kid's life and his death is that gentleman right there, John Chisholm. He was friends with Billy, but then he turned on him and he was one of the people that actually hired Pat Garrett to run Billy the Kid down and either bring him to justice or kill him. This is our first little thing that we're gonna do in kind of tracking around, looking around for Billy the Kid. Because to me, I don't know, there's just something, something about Billy the Kid that I think many people like, even though he had some issues and maybe wasn't the greatest person. But just the, the, the stories and the myths and the legends of Billy the Kid are very interesting. Our first stop on our search for Billy the Kid took us to Lincoln, New Mexico. This little town an hour west of Roswell sits frozen in time. Driving along the main street will transport you back to the late 1800s and pulls you into the history of one of the West's most famous conflicts, the Lincoln County War. The community includes the Lincoln Historic Site, which oversees 17 historical structures, seven of which are accessible year-round. You can gain access to the sites at the Anderson Freeman Visitor Center, and entrance fees are only $5 for adults and free for 17 and under. The Visitor Center is a must and gives you a background on all of the key players in the Lincoln County War. Billy came to Lincoln at the age of 18 and was hired as a cattle guard by John Tunstall. John's rivals, the Murphy Dolan Mercantile and Banking, known as the House, had him killed in February 1878 and it set off the Lincoln County War. Billy the Kid's story is embedded in Lincoln and is seen in nearly every historic building in the area. These buildings start immediately after you leave the visitor center and continue down the main road. The first large building is the Montano store, and it was here that some of Billy the Kid's faction held up during a five-day battle in town at the end of the Lincoln County War. We got here, it's October 29th, and we just got really lucky because all the museums, so all the buildings in Lincoln, the historical ones, those are all part of the museum, which is only $5 per person, free for 1700 to get into, which is amazing. But it all closes. October 31st, open from April to October. So it, it closes in two days. Yes. Yeah, it closes in two days, yeah. So we got very lucky, and there's not a lot of people here because it's cold and it's early. So this is really neat. We get to almost have free reign of the town. Yep. The next building is the old courthouse that also served as the priest house and a saloon. As with everything in Lincoln, this place had a very interesting past. Next door is La Iglesia de San Juan Batista, which was built six years after Billy the Kid's death. This beautiful church is still in use today. Across the street is one of Lincoln's oldest structures. Built in the 1850s, this is where the Murphy Dolan faction placed sharpshooters during the five day battle. The next spot is the empty lot that once held the McSween home. Billy the Kid and many others held up in the house until the Murphy Dolan faction burnt it down and killed Alexander McSween. Next door to that is the Wortley Hotel, which is now a bed and breakfast. So Billy the Kid was up there. Hollinger was over here. When he heard the gunshots, he came running out, Corbin. Ran way over there and 
Billy the Kid shot him with his own shotgun over there. And the building that was once the Murphy Dolan store, then courthouse prison, is down the road. It's from this building that Billy made his daring escape in April 1881. Billy was captured in 1880, nearly two years after the Lincoln County War had ended. He was brought here to Lincoln to await his execution for his role in the killing of Sheriff Brady. The building has fantastic exhibits showing photos of the other regulators and the many letters he wrote to the governor requesting the pardon he'd been promised that would never come. With no pardon in sight and his execution date nearing, Billy decided that breaking out of jail was his only chance at survival. In April 1881, he made a daring and deadly escape. With the kid is back there, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow he and Bell get in a fight. So they come this way, they get in a fight, he shoots Bell. Bell goes outside and dies, and then Billy comes back this way, grabs Olinger's shotgun, goes to the window. Olinger comes running over and he shoots him with his own shotgun. And then he escapes. Escape. Escape. Our last stop was the Tunstall store, which still holds merchandise from the 19th century. Unfortunately, it was closed. Unfortunately, one of the cool places we really want to see the Tunstall store is not open today. But we got to see some other stuff. We got to see the courthouse, right? Yep. Yeah. Now we're going to hit the road and we're going to go out down to Fort Stanton and then maybe a few other stops. Fort Stanton is one of the best preserved 19th century forts in the country. Established in 1855, it saw involvement in the Indian Wars and Civil War, and the troops involved in the Lincoln War were stationed here. The fort closed in 1880, but has since been used as a tuberculosis hospital, World War II internment camp, a women's prison, rehabilitation center, and in 2007, it became a state monument. The grounds and buildings are in amazing shape and we highly recommend you make the stop. If you're heading west, coming out of Roswell, going through Lincoln, and then make a stop at Fort Stanton, the next town is Capitan. We're going to get lunch, then we're going to go to the Smoky Bear Monument, and then we may head south, or we'll head back. It just depends on how everyone feels, because there's a few more Billy the Kid stops nice. that I like to drag my family out to. There are two stops in Capitan to learn all about Smokey the Bear. The first is the Smokey the Bear Memorabilia Museum and Shop. This one-room shop has just about every Smokey the Bear item you could ever want and kids love it. The second stop is the Smokey the Bear Historical Park, which is next to the shop and gives you the full story on Smokey's amazing life. In 1950, he was orphaned in the Capitan Gap wildfire and rescued by fire crews. A ranger later took him to Santa Fe where the word of his story got out. His legend grew and he moved on to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., where he lived for 26 years, became the symbol that we all know, had millions of visitors, and grew to love peanut butter sandwiches. After he passed away, he was flown back to be buried near where his story began. The park has a great outdoor boardwalk and is also home to the New Mexico Wildland Firefighter Memorial, which pays tribute to the wildland firefighters who gave their lives to protect their state.
Smokey's resting place is at the back of the park and has an interesting story all its own. He, par- he, he died when he was 26 years old, but he retired when he was 25. And after he passed away, they brought him back here. And they actually had to bury him at night because word on the street was that somebody was going to try to steal him. So they buried him. And then at some point, uh, some folks were messing with the grave. So they had, had to actually reinforce it so that somebody doesn't steal Smokey the Bear. There's some weird folks out there. This was the last great stop to our first day in search of Billy the Kid. The next part would take place nearly two hours away. Did we tell you it was cold in Roswell? I think last night it was 18 or 19. It's chilly. But today we are on our part two of Billy the Kid adventures. So we're gonna drive the hour and a half from Roswell up to Fort Sumner. We're gonna see his real grave, his fake grave, this weird museum that I was at 25 years ago that's got like double-headed snakes or something, and uh, let the kid explore around. The drive from Roswell to Fort Sumner can be described as boring. There isn't much to see, but if you're lucky, you just might come across some antelope. Fort Sumner is the resting place of Billy the Kid, although some believe he wasn't killed by Pat Garrett and instead changed his name to Brushy Bill Roberts and lived until 1950. There are two stops you need to make in Fort Sumner if you're searching for Billy. The first, and a definite must-see, is the Billy the Kid Museum. The museum was opened in 1953 by Ed and Jules Sweet, and what started out as a one-building museum has continued to grow and now contains over 60,000 items from New Mexico's history along with a huge collection of Billy the Kid artifacts. The museum is now owned and operated by Ed and Jewel's son Donald, his wife Lula, and their son Tim. Make sure you take the time to talk to them. They are some of the kindest people you'll ever meet, and they will tell you more about Billy the Kid than you'll ever read in a book. Where's Billy the Kid? That's Billy, playing croquet? Mm -hmm. Which one's Billy? I forgot. The one to the right? Yep, he's right there. Where? He's in the back right. They also have an exact replica of Billy's grave. The second stop you need to make is at Old Fort Sumner and the site of Billy's resting place, which is in a graveyard behind what used to be the Old Fort Sumner Museum. Pat Garrett shot and killed Billy the Kid on 14 July, 1881, in a house that used to be nearby. Billy was 21 years old when he died and has captured the world's interest ever since. We finished up our little Billy the Kid, uh, I don't know, journey. Today we were out at what used to be the old Fort Sumner Museum, which is now closed. And it's just part of the, it's owned by the Chamber of Commerce. But back behind there is Billy the Kid's grave, the real one. And uh, we did the museum and got to see all the, the history that the, um, the Sweet family who owns the museum has put together, which was awesome. Corbin even enjoyed it. And to bring a seven-year-old and make him look at history, that's kind of, that's tough sometimes. But it was really cool to be able to come up here and see where Billy's life ended. And uh, 
I think maybe where the legends really kind of began because I mean there's so many stories about him but to see it firsthand really neat very cool our journey to find Billy the Kid ended our time in New Mexico join us next week as we head to Arizona the petrified national forest and a gigantic crater Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.